So this, this talk is just kind of to set the stage. And I'm going to do this in, in two parts. Uh, I'm going to start by just talking about uh, the central Appalachians in Virginia, just what's here now um, in terms of physiographic provinces and that sort of stuff. Uh, I am a big fan of using Google Earth to illustrate this sort of stuff. So you're going to see the first half of this talk. I'm going to run it completely out of Google Earth. The images you see on here uh, are completely available, and I'll make sure they end up on the flash drives and stuff that people can take away with them um, that has that stuff. And then the second part of it will be sort of how it got that way. Okay, So it'll be a little bit of geologic history and tectonic history for how this part of the world ended up the way it is. Okay, so yeah, um, let me turn off uh, the title screen and let's just talk a little bit about Virginia. So there is a little arrow there, which is a you are here arrow. And if we start to zoom in and start to get a little bit closer to where we are, there's you are here, which is Harrisonburg and the Festival Center. And what you see here coming up are a set of colored maps for the Virginia area. And these are the physiographic provinces of Virginia. Um, and probably most of you are familiar with these, but let's start at the basics. There are five main physiographic provinces in Virginia. These go from the coastal plain, as you mentioned initially, which is largely sediments uh, overlying rocks underneath, you know, basically things like Cretaceous to Holocene sediments, a few sedimentary rocks, but mostly a, a thin sediment veneer. Uh, then progressing to the west, we have probably the largest physiographic province in Virginia, which is the Piedmont. And in Virginia, we don't subdivide this into inner and outer Piedmont as they do as you get down in the North Carolina area and all that, where there's a bit more detail. Uh, especially in terms of rock type. But the Piedmont has a wide variety of stuff. Mesozoic to pa Paleozoic igneous, metamorphic rocks, Mesozoic sedimentary basins, uh, but very little relief. So it's still pretty flat in that region. Of course, Piedmont means foothills, right? So we're, we are very low topography going through here. Then we move into this thin blue, appropriately, uh, province here, the Blue Ridge, which is the high country of Virginia, um, reaching up to about 5,000 feet, I think it's Mount Rogers. It's about as high as we get in Virginia. Unlike North Carolina, that's got 18, I believe, 6,000 foot peaks. So again, it gets higher down to the south of us. But uh, this is basically basement rocks that have been brought up to the surface during the Allegheny and Orogeny, but I'll get into that. Um, again, older stuff, Mesoproterozoic, billion year old rocks, uh, Cambrian, uh, igneous, Cambrian sedimentary cover over the top of it, but essentially the high, the high country. Then we move into where we are, right? You are here. So Harrisonburg sits right in the middle of the Valley and Ridge province, uh, characterized by, you guessed it, lots of linear ridges that trend northeast to southwest and lots of linear valleys in between. Again, mostly trending northeast to southwest, uh, very much the grain of the Appalachian Mountains is what's going right through this section and bending a little bit and then it bends a little bit south again in Tennessee. So these are a bit younger than the Blue Ridge Rocks, mostly Paleozoic. We're talking maybe about 500 to about 300 uh, million year old rocks. Okay, And then there's one little piece way down here of the Allegheny Plateau. And Allegheny Plateau are essentially Pennsylvanian and Mississippian, about 300 million year old rocks. That's what's at the surface. But unlike the folding and the faulting that we see in the Valley Ridge and the Blue Ridge and to a certain extent the Piedmont, these rocks are essentially flat lying and they've just been cut by the dendritic drainage pattern of the rivers. So when you hit the Allegheny Plateau, you've pretty much brought yourself out of the folded and faulted region of Virginia. And of course, if this were, instead of being uh, 2012, if this were 18, let's say 55, um, we'd be able to extend the Allegheny Plateau into much of the rest of Virginia. Uh, we now call this West Virginia, of course, right? Okay, so. 
They got, yeah, they got, they didn't get all the uranium, but they got a lot of the coal. Okay, so let's zoom in a little bit. So this is, these are physiographic provinces. These are originally characterized by topographic relief, okay? These are geo, say geographical, to topographic designated features. But as geologists, we recognize that most of the topographic relief that we see on the surface is governed by underlying geology. So if I zoom in a little bit more, that map is going to switch to a geologic map of a simplified geologic map of the state of Virginia. Where over here you see the flat-lying Holocene uh, sediments of the of the um, coastal plain or the tidewater, if you want to call it that. Here's the Piedmont, this gray, these are the old Mesoproterozoic rocks. There's a lot of different terrains in here that we've lumped together, um, schists and gneisses, but also you see these pink areas, which are these Mesozoic basins related to the opening of the Atlantic. Interestingly, the Mesozoic basins did not seem to make it onto the other side of the Blue Ridge. This seemed largely a feature of the east side of the Blue Ridge. Then we go into Blue Ridge rocks, which are basement rocks. Uh, the cover sequence is what's here in um, yellow. And then we get into the Valley and Ridge, and the color does a very nice job of highlighting all these linear ridges. Um, for those of you that are familiar, the purple here is the Massanutten Synclinorium, which you can see right out the window here. So this is a broad brush view of the geology of Virginia. I should say one other thing before I move beyond this. When I was showing physiographic provinces, of course this is a mid-Atlantic workshop. It's not just Virginia. And so if you were, say, to look at how these things extend around us, let's just do this, okay? You see that the Virginia provinces continue up into things, things change a bit in New England, but they pretty much continue up through New York. And the same things swing down through uh, the deeper south, you might say, as we move down into Georgia and Alabama. Things kind of truncate at the edge of the Appalachians, although the coastal plain, of course, would continue around. So a lot of these provinces are similar and extrapolatable um, throughout areas to the north and south of us.